Our meeting tonight is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Donna, Donna from Oregon, go ahead. Hi, everyone. The other day I was digging in my backyard when I stepped down on a very sturdy twig that had managed to get inside my garden clog. It wasn't very big around, so it entered the ball of my foot easily and quite deeply. I pulled it out with some difficulty and limped to the house. I washed my foot and put alcohol and a Band-Aid on it. It didn't take long before my foot really started to hurt. I began giving myself treatment, saying that nothing material can affect a spiritual being and that God is right here with me. The next morning, my whole foot was quite swollen, red, and very painful. I still kept trying to help myself, but it continued to get worse. I knew I needed help, so I called my practitioner. She was so sweet and kind and, as always, willing to help. Within just a couple of days, you could hardly tell there had ever been a problem. When I, <clears throat> when I get practitioner help, it's such a clean, quick, complete healing. When you take drugs, there are often side effects that require an additional drug, then another drug to counteract the side effects of that drug. God gave us his son Jesus to show us the perfect solution so that we won't have health problems at all. Too bad we're hypnotized from birth to believe in them. It makes me sad to think of what Jesus went through, including death, to show me the truth, and sad that I'm so slow to know how to use it. I will continue to absorb what I learned from Jesus' teachings for the rest of my life. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight and the beautiful prelude. Tonight I want to express my gratitude for the Bible studies and all that I have learned from them. It has been said before that it was a very inspired idea that Thomas came up with and then went, moved forward and started and worked and has been dedicating many years of his time toward. The Bible study was the first thing that drew me to this church and I will be forever grateful. The Bible no longer feels like an unknown mystery. I had tried other Bible study classes and other attempts to study on my own, but it just felt like facts and dry. But when we started the practical lessons that are here, they're so priceless with the prism of Christian science that, and the joy and the humor and the people that are living the promises and the love for the uh, Bible itself just exudes through every class. I'm also very grateful for the instruction to read daily from the Bible, from the Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Maker Eddy and her writings and prose works. I have learned so much being part of this committee in the last few years, and I am grateful for the many volunteers over the years that we have had and the extensive audio classes and all uh, the YouTubes that Jeremy posts. It is truly meeting a need when you go and see how it draws so many people to listen to it. It has opened my eyes to how deeply Mary Baker Eddy knew and used the Bible and how science and health is indeed the key to the scriptures. The more I read the Bible, the more I appreciate Mrs. Eddy's life and teachings. These classes have taught me a greater sense of discipline, a sense of gratitude for the many prophets, and the golden thread throughout time of the many people who have continued to live the Bible precepts throughout the years up to now. It has strengthened my character and brought healing to my life and it gave me purpose at a time in my life that I had none. And it, had become, and it became a building block for other work for God and this cause as time went on. I'm so grateful to be part of this church. I'm very grateful for our great God and for Christ Jesus' teaching and Mary Baker Eddy's writings and this church that continues them. And Thomas, if you're listening, thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. I'm very grateful to be a member of this church and for all I am learning here. 
When I first arrived here, I started learning about how God is in control of all reality and that there is nothing aside from God. And because of this, and because of what I was learning at the round tables and from my practitioner, I began to see that concepts such as luck, chance, randomness, fortune, and similar words had no basis in the good that God has created. So I started to work to eliminate those words from my vocabulary and replace them and the thought they represented with the words and thoughts that more accurately describe the life that God has given us. In many cases, good luck became a blessing from God. A chance became a God-given opportunity, and so on. Being, being diligent in this has served to help me be more sure that God is the source of all good because I am giving him credit for it all day long. And it has also helped me to see what I once would have described as bad luck and which made me a victim is now an error to be handled using Christian science and a lesson to be learned. I'm so grateful for all I have learned of Christian science here and for the ongoing support of my practitioner, which has completely changed my life into one that is worth living and allows me to be useful. Thank you. And now I have a testimony from Imogen in Australia. Good evening. Tonight I wanted to thank my dear Plainfield practitioner whose selfless love and strength in the Christ has taught me much. A few months ago, some renovations were needed in our home, and some paint was scraped off a wall. I was rushing quite a bit between working from home and taking my lunch break. I realised after finishing up my lunch that I had most probably ingested some paint dust from the wall that inadvertently had been shaken into my meal. My first response was panic. My second response was to know exactly where to turn for help. I knew that God does always and ever protect me because I have had countless situations over my lifetime where the truth of the scriptures has been proven to me with signs following. Thanks to all the wonderful teaching at Plainfield Independent, it was very good to be able to gauge within myself that this was a situation where I needed some help. So I rang my Plainfield practitioner and I immediately felt much better. Even though I wasn't able to reach her immediately, I recalled Psalm 91 that she has been exhorting us to memorize. So I worked with verse 11, quote, For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. And from Mark 16, 18, quote, And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. When the practitioner called me back, it was quite late in the United States, so this was a very selfless and loving thing for her to do. I felt really humbled for her care, and I was very joyful to be speaking with her. I realized I was completely safe. As soon as I heard her voice, I just laughed and said that this was a thing that was a little bit out of my comfort zone to handle. So I was very grateful for her skillful and holy prayer in applying Christian science to support me during that day and evening. After speaking with her, I felt I could just laugh about the whole thing. And of course, there were no digestive problems over the next 24-hour period. My tummy was fine. No reaction. No issues at all. So I'm very grateful for Christian science, and I'm learning so much at Plainfield Independent. I'm even learning that rushing is animal magnetism. Because if I'm rushing, I am forgetting that it is God who is over all. God has been my protector for my whole life. He has always looked after me whenever I've prayed. Christian science teaches the science of Christianity, the very science of Christ healing and of all things. It is over and above all other categories of so-called human science, with its potent power to protect, to save, and to adjust everything we experience. So thank you to my dear practitioner at this church for taking me up and helping me to deal with ingesting paint, something that was quite out of my comfort zone. I thank our Lord God Almighty 
the Creator of all, I thank Christ Jesus, our Master Teacher, and I thank Mary Baker Eddy for leading all humanity out of darkness and into the sunlight of His love, His might, His power. So much love to you all, dearest Plainfield Independent. Thank you. Shardell. Hello. I would like to express my gratitude this evening for Christian Science and the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. Every activity brings with it deeper understanding and a keener spiritual sense. The Bible study last Saturday brought such a blessing of truth revealed about the one and only God on the throne in Revelation, with his Christ declaring, King of kings and Lord of lords, that no matter how noisy and large error displays itself, God is omniscient, omnipotent, all presence and action. John was told to write it all down, and that Mrs. Eddy revealed to us in her writings, Christ's truth. Everything taught here brings us closer to God, and my gratitude is overflowing. How wonderful that the Plainfield website provides the ability to listen to the Bible studies going back to 2015. How awesome. Heard ye the power of the word? Lately, I have been thinking more about God's almighty power, and these words came to me from Mrs. Eddy's hymn, Saw ye my Savior. Heard ye the glad sound? Felt ye the power of the word? That's hymn 299. Without the Plainfield Church, my practitioner and members, none of this would have been possible for me. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Nancy. Nancy from New Jersey, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you, Fairly, for the beautiful readings tonight on Divine Love, for the beautiful music tonight and the testimonies. I also express my gratitude for the wonderful Bible study on Vision 1 and Revelation and for the roundtable on becoming one with the Father, this, this all taking place this past weekend. It was truly a God-inspired weekend to me, just filled to overflowing with so many ideas and truths to ponder and work with throughout the week. And I am also so grateful that the Bible studies and the roundtable discussions are all archived and made available to us on the website to listen and study at our leisure. I especially love, and I'm so grateful, that the inspiring articles that are read and discussed in the roundtable are archived with links that you can just click on and revisit those articles for further study. So I wanted to just say thank you to all who make this possible. And I am so grateful for all who work so tirelessly to provide us with these discussions. And I am grateful for all the thoughtful and inspiring contributions given during these times. I'm so grateful again for all that we are given and taught in this church, all God-inspired and given with self, selfless love, where we are encouraged to study to practice and live the pure Christian science that we are taught here. I am so grateful to God and for Christ Jesus, for Mary Baker Eddy, and I am so very grateful to my practitioner for her strong support in helping me to grow in my understanding of this science. And I'm very happy to be here this evening. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Florence from Georgia. Go ahead. Thank you. 
thank you fairly for the beautiful readings tonight. I have a testimony from Australia. And he says, a young family member who lives away from home contacted me recently in a state of great fear that he was losing the sense of feeling in his face and fearing that he would be unable to smile again. At Plainfield, we are taught not to be impressed by error or animal magnetism, that it is simply a belief which is trying to attach itself to somebody. It is not a reality, and it's neither person, place, or thing. I was grateful to be able to talk calmly to him, and leaning on my learnings from the weekly lesson sermons, testimony meetings, and roundtables, told him to deny these thoughts as totally untrue because he was the son of the king, his representative to do his will, to reflect and express qualities like perfection, power, strength, beauty, intelligence, confidence, understanding, joy, and calmness. To be so grateful for being his son and that he supplies all our needs every single moment and to claim this. Big Now Young puts it succinctly as all that thou art, I am. This is, can be found in God is individual consciousness. And from Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. I followed up this phone call by texting through these prayerful messages from our conversation and also included from Watches, Prayers, and Arguments page 140 by Mary Baker Eddy, the powerful morning prayer in Mrs. Eddy's home, which was in our watch, uh, Unity Watch on July 2021. It is a favorite. And it says, this is God's spiritual household. Nothing can enter to annoy or destroy. Nothing can enter to manifest sin sickness or discouragement, for God good keeps this household in perfect peace. There is no evil condition of thought that can enter or argue or suggest or make any law to dominate or control me, intimidate me or crush me, bring any evil to pass upon me or shut out of my consciousness any good. There is no law but the divine law of harmony and dominion. For God, good governs every member in perfect peace and love. In sending these, I turned him over to God. He was calmer and able to resume his work. I call that lunchtime and fearful belief were again trying to claim reality. And 2 Timothy 1.7 came to mind. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I also reminded him to claim his sonship and that as God is all in all, there was no room for error or anything unlike him, that he was guiding and guiding to be at peace in his love and care and to listen for his direction. He was calm and able to return to work. Later that day, he came home for a home-cooked dinner and to stay the night. He shared more truth and directed, we directed him to the audio spiritual consultations by Rosalie Mars Stamp, which he saved and listened to on his laptop a couple of times, finding great comfort and inspiration. The claims of error failed and melted away as an unreality into their native nothingness. I am so grateful for these learnings and demonstration of God's unfailing love and care for all his children and to have the priceless foundations of Christian science. I'm grateful for the Christ Jesus, for Christ Jesus, who paved the way for the Holy Bible, for Mary Baker Eddy, bringing the science to humanity, for the early workers, for Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent and the dedicated members and practitioners and for all the abundant resources so lovingly given to all honest seekers of truth. Love to all.
Yes, it's from Australia. Tonight, I'm so grateful to be here, and I'd like to share something recently. I had to take my car for an early morning appointment at the dealers. And when I sat in the car, I started to think that God is with me and his love abounds. And just knew that in everyone's car also was God loving them. And I thought of the days I used to resent driving to work and the thought of how differently it would have felt or people would feel now if they know when they sit in their cars to go to work because it's quite a bit of traffic. But to think that I'm going to do what I can do best with the gifts that God has given me and to bless and glorify him, that would change everything. It has a very a different feeling when one thinks like that. Anyway, when I got to the dealers, the attendant wanted to know if I wanted a complete diagnosis, which would cost an extra $90. Right then, the thought came, no, all you need is to, to do what you were to do, to you know, change your valve. So I said, no, that I would trust my car, the care of my car to God. I said that. <laughs> it just came out of my mouth. And the attendant said, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. So anyway, they took the car, fixed the um, valve. That's all that needed to be fixed. And the cost was much, much less than he had quoted. I just want to thank God for what I know now. And when I compare what I know now and how living with God means in practice compared to how I used to live, I am just so grateful for all that I have learned through Christian science and what a difference it makes in, in practicing Christian science. Just grateful to be here tonight to hear all these beautiful testimonies and certainly the, the readings and the music as well. Happy to be here tonight, and thanks be to God. Thank you. Carol or John, New Hampshire. Yeah, Carol or John from New Hampshire. Go ahead. Uh, this is John. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to express my profound gratitude for the Plainfield Christian Science Church for its adherence to Christ Jesus' teachings about God for its faithful practice of Christian science as taught by Mary Baker Eddy, and for the healing work of the practitioners in this church. Some time ago, I found myself unable to stand up and had to lie on the floor. With the help of a practitioner in this church, this condition was quickly healed. At another time, I had a severe toothache that no pain reliever could stop and had to wait several days before I could obtain a dental appointment. After calling a practitioner in this church, the pain alleviated markedly. The practitioner's work continued through my dental appointment where a complication occurred, but this complication was beautifully removed as I sat in the dentist's chair with a successful outcome. The Plainfield Independent Christian Science Church is proof that instead of closing down as membership dwindles, churches in the Christian Science Movement can progress and thrive in the practice of Christian Science through their own independent and unrestricted efforts. I am very grateful to God for this church. Thank you. Yeah, this is Bruce, and I'd like to say how thankful I am for the watching point that's being featured on our website. Um, it's a very helpful watching point. It talks about if you're doing things, don't barge ahead with human will because on your own, you can do nothing. But if you recognize that God's power is with you and that you are the reflection of that power, then on, from that basis, 
There isn't anything you can't do. So that's a very helpful um, point. And I had a chance to use that recently. Uh, a few days ago, Luann and I were working on a project here at the church, and it was one that needs to be done. And we ran out of a certain material that we were using. And I thought, well, that means i got to find a place to get more of it. <clears throat> so I went downstairs, got on the phone. I called a, at least two other stores, and I could not get anybody on the phone to talk to. So Lu Luann came down because she was done as far as she could go. And I just got the idea. I know there's a store, and I don't know what's there, but it, this store came to my mind, and I had actually never been to this store before. So we had a lovely drive through many neighborhoods and went to the store, went to the place where they had this product, and Luann spotted it almost all, all right away. And... I'm so grateful because it was like God was leading us all along. Why not? He leads us all along anyway. <laughs> but it, whenever he does, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. And uh, I was so grateful because we bought the product that we needed, came back here, and the next day was able to finish the, what we needed to do. In other words, God took care of us. So I'm grateful for that, but I'm also grateful to learn that if we think that we're doing things on our own, we can't do anything. But if we know that, we're, that we are God's reflection, there isn't anything we can't do. It's very helpful. Mishahila. Hello, good evening. I'm happy and grateful tonight about hymn 391. That him was sung a few Sundays ago. The first verse is like this. Why search the future and the past? Why do you why do ye look with tearful eyes and seek far off the paradise? Before your feet life pearl is cast. When I sang and read that last line, I immediately thought, yes, that is exactly what someone in my life needs to look at. at. This person seeks the paradise far off and doesn't see the pearl before their feet. Then it hit me. Maybe this message was for me. Do I see the pearl before my feet? Am I criticizing in someone else what I am lacking? I suddenly realized that this someone is the pearl in my life. The pearl that forces me to do better and to not judge. Like in Matthew 7, first verse 2, it says, For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. It is easy to see error in others, but can I see my own shortcomings? I am learning to see that when I criticize something in someone else, I better take a good look at myself and get rid of the wrong picture in myself. Did God make anything or anyone who or that isn't his child? No. At that moment, I started to look at this someone as the pearl before my feet. 
And since I did that, our relationship improved wonderfully. I thank you for this wonderful meeting and the practical inspirations that I gained from all the meetings and services at Plainfield and from all the readings which are available. It's such a blessing. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Luba from Ohio, go ahead. I'm so grateful for how much greater understanding of Christian science I have gained since coming to Plainfield. The round tables and Bible studies have been so enlightening, and I'm especially grateful to my practitioner who is always available. Also, how very grateful I am to Mary Baker Eddy and what she has provided in, Christ in science and health. I'm so happy to be here this evening, and thank you so much for the reading. Thank you. Gary. I was thinking recently how I came to find the Plainfield Church, and when I did, uh, shortly after, I realized it really was the answer to a lifelong prayer. As a young child, I attended Christian Science Sunday Schools in uh, Seattle and Portland, Oregon, and I must have had some good Sunday School teachers because I had a very strong feeling that Christian Science was the truth, and it had helped me in many ways as a young child. And I attended some churches there, but I felt a deep lacking um, attending the churches. Um, in my heart, I felt there was something tremendous in Christian science, and yet I didn't see it lived. Um, and then I, God led me to all the way across the country to go to school. And there I met my wife, who introduced me to a practitioner in this church, who was different from any other Christian scientist that I knew. She, she was tremendously loving, uh, tremendously principled, and she healed. Uh, and it left the impression on me that this was Christian science, and this was what I was looking for as a child. Well, we moved here because we felt that if we were going to have a family, we were going to need a, a practitioner that we could trust, that we could rely on. And shortly after we moved here, um, during one Sunday service, one of the members of our church keeled over and fell on the floor, fell on the bench. Uh, her heart had stopped and she was passing on. But this practitioner, very calmly, walked down the aisle, sat next to her, pulled her up, put her arm around her, and spoke to her, told her that God loved her, that she had things to do for God. Within a few minutes, the person who had passed on came to. And by the end of the service, she was standing up to sing the last hymn. This made quite an impression on all of us. And again, proof that this was the right place for me, that this was Christian science. That was many years ago, and I have to say, I have experienced many healings in Christian science. I, have, I am infinitely grateful 
for all what I have learned through Christian science, through the help of that practitioner and the teaching of that practitioner that I have received. This was an answer to prayer. I didn't come here by accident. There wasn't any luck or <laughs> anything else involved. It was clearly God leading me here. And I am so grateful that God did so. I'm so grateful to be here with you all tonight. And thank you very much, Fairly, for the readings. And thank you all for the testimonies tonight. Thank you. Mary. Good evening, everyone. A few things to read. Uh, first, for Virginia. Many thanks for the performance of the Deer's Cry performed Sunday, October 9th. Such a beautiful and comforting message and so well done. This can also be found, the words, in the July 2019 Love is the Liberator, along with a most inspiring painting by Luann Tucker. Also along these lines in the January 2021 Love is the Liberator is the article Christ's Government from Matthew Henry's Complete Bible Commentary on Isaiah 9, 7. Much gratitude for these very pertinent aids in our daily study and prayer to see God's kingdom at hand. And then these are a few from Canada. My thanks to a Canadian friend and Plainfield member who forwarded me the Thanksgiving lesson that she had received from the Plainfield Church. And thank you, Plainfield, for sending it to Canada in advance of the U.S. Thanksgiving. It was wonderful to be able to read it this weekend for our Canadian Thanksgiving. It was actually last weekend. And then I also am very grateful to have received this wonderful lesson from my study on the Canadian Thanksgiving. Thank you, dear Plainfield. And thank you, dear Plainfield, for this morning's Bible study and the truth that the book of Revelation is revealing to us. It is very enlightening and brings no more of the fear I used to associate with reading this book. I am still learning and I go back to the archived for more insights and clarity. Thanks to Mrs. Eddy for her explanations in our textbook. And then this from Vermont. Dear Plainfield Church, please find enclosed our monthly offering. May it be an expression of our gratitude for all that this church is doing to honor and share Mary Baker Eddy's pure Christian science. God bless you all. And then a testimony from California. The watch by Gilbert Carpenter from last week instructed in being flexible in thought, and I used it with our new dog from the shelter. This week, as I was reading our watch, number 416, a flurry of thoughts arose and then I quickly texted the entire watch to my son-in-law. It spoke of doing God's work and the important first step in doing his work, knowing that we can do nothing of ourselves, subordinating human will to God's power. My son-in-law had just been interviewed for a new job out of state, and there was great excitement in the family with, po with the possible move. In listening to all the talk, I sensed thoughts relying on God were starting to get mixed up with what each person wanted. Because I know that there is a huge difference when we rely on God to direct us versus the ups and downs experienced when the human will is involved. I wanted to encourage him and my daughter to remember that God was in charge, always had been, always would be, and that even now, right where he was, he was doing God's work which was the only important thing, no matter where he did it. Mr. Carpenter's watch made all of this clear and was just the right thing to share. Later on in the day, as I was thinking of my dear family, I had to smile to myself to see the impact that the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent has had on my life, as seen in this particular situation, as well as many others, I have learned more about my religion in the past two years than in my whole lifetime before. And I'm so grateful for the weekly lessons and watches which show me over and over again that there is one mind at work in this church. I am so grateful to be part of this church. 
and sending loads of joy to you all. And those watch messages are picked out each week by Karen in California. And, and it does show the prayer involved in everything that we do. We pray that uh, may it bless all. May we feed your sheep, dear Father. And in doing that, the things that are set forth in our church do bring healing to those who come to our 24-7 reading room, as is often referred to. So I thank you all tonight for those beautiful testimonies and such beautiful readings on love and the beautiful music tonight. May God bless you all and have a good night. Thank you.